Basically, everyone is either a vampire, dead, or about to be. Let's go. Andrew Bennett is so excited to share his story, he doesn't care if he's hit by a car or catches on fire. Okay, maybe he does. The Vampire Queen had a policy of no sucking on humans, but when she died, he tracked down her killer to the Legion of Doom, where Luthor gave him a quest to deliver a syringe of his own blood. That's when it is revealed that Hal Jordan himself is a vampire. He grinds up Zan into a smoothie and burns him into ashes. In the Batcave, Alfred presents the letter and syringe. After making sure they're not vampires, Batman shows them their new toys. Hal takes Barry to the beach and murders him, because this event wouldn't last 12 issues with the fastest vampire alive, alive. Batman goes for a swim in sewage to find what's left of Zan, explaining that only light could have made a cut like this. Oliver and Dinah are organizing their own blood donation center as a front to figure out who is and isn't already a vampire. Diana confirms her suspicions on Hal, but he seduces her and they return to the Hall of Justice to frame Batman as the killer. Oliver tries to assassinate Bruce, but they come to realize that neither of them are vampires. The real vampires arrive, who have seemingly persuaded the Justice League to their side. Not like they have a Martian who can read people's minds, or a magical rope that makes you tell the truth. No, they resort to a fist fight. Can you really blame them for assuming Batman's a vampire? Batman's been waiting his whole life to take down the entire Justice League, save for Diana. The immortal vampire goddess easily overpowers them until the Robins come to their rescue. Everyone is thrown under the bus when the Batcave explodes, leaving them to fend for themselves. Task Force X is investigating Joker, but they might want to investigate their own team because they're looking a little bloodthirsty. Luckily, Batgirl was in the area. Harley calls Amanda Waller and she pushes a few buttons. The survivors bait the vampires into a trap and slice off his arm. Batgirl calls in saying they were tricked. Joker isn't the Vampire King. Bruce realizes too late as Dick shoves an arm through his chest, soloing the Bat family and biting Damien. Oliver has one last arrow, but decides against taking out the Vampire King because we're only halfway through this event. The vampires waste no time in taking over the world by smoking out the sun. Jaina and Bones narrowly escape an ambush to deliver the asset. Adam shrinks them into the world of Kandor to settle a dispute. Oliver wants to rescue people from a blood farm. Some of them want to launch Kara into the sun, and Barbara wants to kill the Vampire King. Jim Gordon got sick and tired of being chased by the vampires, so he gives Harley the vial containing Luthor's blood. She tries to be a hero, but they scare her back to Selina, who reveals herself as a vampire. She bites into Harley but turns into dust because she injected the blood into herself. Luckily, he was a universal donor or she's a universal recipient. Vampire Damien is working undercover. He finally meets face to face with the dick who laughs, but he already knows exactly what he's up to, and the vampires dispose of the Martian. Upon learning he has Alfred, Damien races back to save his life. Dick suddenly decides he wants peace, and he's like, run along now, shrimp, and never bother me again. The magicians fail to cure vampirism. It's actually so pathetic that Jason Blood shows up to wipe their memories, and Constantine barely escapes with his life. Barbara grabs Harley and heads into Gotham to finish it once and for all. Jaina joins the crew as they embark for Australia to launch Supergirl into the sun. Since everyone's ditching, Oliver makes his way over to Smallville. He catches Hawkman's attention who swoops in to grab him. Right as they approach Australia, a bunch of crazy strong sea monsters jump them, which can only mean one thing. Arthur is like, that helmet looks funny on you, pretender, right as he is because it's Mera. In the ensuing chaos, Kara is pulled under the ocean. Batgirl leads them to the bat signal and fires it up, letting all the vampires know that they're coming. They're joined by others around the city as they also give up their location. Oliver is like, you better go now because you won't get a chance to go later, so Grifter pees on Swamp Thing. They manage to defeat Aquaman, and Kara is perfectly fine as they finally see the ship. 
Reaching the Vampire King just got a lot tougher now that they have the attention of every vampire in Gotham. The Australians run into the main man who agrees to help until he decides to get in on the vampire killing action. They stall the Martians for long enough so that when John tears off the cloak, Kara is already on the ship, but it explodes. Meanwhile, in a cave someplace else, Azrael is kicked into the Lazarus Pit which cures his vampirism and they somehow make it out of there alive. In the underground bunker, Captain Adam is wasting away his power to be a farmer instead of I don't know, using that power to burn vampires? Because of that, vampire damage walks into his garden, exploding in his face. Constantine gathers the survivors to seek out Talia, because they're planning on dunking Weather Wizard into a Lazarus pit to bring back the sun. Diana crashes the party to meet Mary's right hook, but that won't keep the Amazon down for long. After telling Slade where the pit is, Constantine runs off with Dead Man to fake his death. While basking in the glory of the sun, they spot vampire Batwoman creeping on them. She's like, whoa, calm down, I'm with Damien. They join her in rescuing the damsel in distress, then Starfire flies off. Bane was violated by a vampire, so Deadman slips into his body and snaps his neck because that's what he would have wanted. Probably. Before this whole vampire apocalypse, Dick's sister Melinda brought him into vampire politics, who wanted him to eliminate their opposition. Dick is like, I didn't even vote in the last election, and despite a valiant effort, he's turned. Mary sneaks into the farm where Prometheus hypnotizes her to turn back into a vampire. She fell victim to Diana, and Mary Marvel is the only thing preventing it from spreading. After her team is decimated, she figures it's time to confront Weather Wizard. Unfortunately, Azrael has other ideas because the vampires made him an offer he couldn't refuse. He then immediately refuses the offer so that the heroes can escape. They finally drop Weather Wizard into the pit, but I don't think that is supposed to happen. Just like that, their plan to save the world goes down the drain, but when they're about to call it quits, Shazam finds them. Mary isn't one for violence and gives them a big hug. She spares Billy from this nightmare and catches up to the team who have discovered an ice sculpture of Captain Cold. Leonard Snart was bit and pulled a Nora Freeze hoping this would all be over when he wakes up. That's not the case as Superman slams into the ground and literally rips them apart. Mary's reluctant to transform, fearing the vampire side has taken over, but she's too young to die. Using the last of his strength, Slade helps her to defeat Superman, then they fly off to save the world. They didn't come all this way for Kara to die on them. Constantine gives the pep talk of his life and it was so inspirational, Captain Cold sacrifices himself to restore Supergirl's powers. Over in Smallville, Oliver leads the resistance to defeat Hawkman. Barbara's been spending the last six issues plotting her revenge. When the opportunity finally presents itself, she can't bring herself to kill the love of her life and allows herself to be turned. They celebrate by feasting on Harley. Psych? She takes command of the Vampire Kingdom and becomes the new final boss. I thoroughly enjoyed this book from start to end, hoping they come out with more. Bye!